many months ago, Hand and Lock received hundreds of submissions and our esteemed judging panel set about selecting the 24 finalists you see here tonight. More than anyone else, they have been able to interrogate and understand the processes and practices of each of our finalists. I'm an embroidery specialist, so I work as a designer, a maker and a teacher. Born with a needle in my hand. <laughs> my mother uh, was a, quite a famous embroiderer and I just I always had embroidery around me. I used to be a principal lecturer at the London College of Fashion and I'm now artistic director at the Embroiderers Guild. I trained at Glasgow School of Art uh, 25, 30 years ago in embroidery and weaving. So right from my, you know, from the very beginning, embroidery was the thing. Well, I look for the wow factor, which is what Hand and Lock are asking for, but also I look for concept ideas, so original ideas, and also skill as well, and that might be hand skill, it might be um, digital embroidery skill, or a combination of both, yeah. So if it's clothing, it's quite likely to be something I would love to have the confidence to wear, and that's certainly the case tonight, looking at things and saying, that's beautiful, that's making a statement, that's a character piece. Um, maybe a piece of theatre. When I'm looking at the textile artist, does it have an emotional resonance? So there are pieces downstairs that I just had to stop and I just had to smile because they were so beautiful. Um, others I looked at and could see their technical brilliance. So for me, I want an emotional response. So often something that's, you know, knocks you off your feet is, you know, is very easy to spot. Um, when you're then looking at things that are similar, um, there has to be enough skill to communicate what the artist wants to communicate. People who go in for competitions must follow the brief. It's very easy to say that uh, you know, I do my own work and I'll just try and fit it into somebody else's brief. But the brief is important, it's there for a reason. And after the, the brief has been uh, considered by the candidate, then it's really about composition, it's about use of embroidery. I like to see uh, different textures, different materials and different skills used you know, in connection with each other. And in first place, Sheila Ramsey. So my name is Sheila Ramsey and I'm from Toronto in Canada. I decided it'd be really fun to play with the idea of high fashion and like really luxurious uh, materials and to put that together with what is now sustainable and what you wouldn't necessarily expect to be in a high fashion garment. Then I used materials that were local to me and sourced from nature. So this, all this white fluff is milkweed, which in Canada is this weed that grows everywhere. And they have these fluffs that carry the seeds away. They look somewhere between feathers and fur, but it's the kind of thing you look at and you don't really know. So I pulled all that together and this is the warping of the plaid in here is my nod to the optical illusion. So from far away, it's elegant, it's rich, it's one a very traditional jacket, but up close, you can start questioning like, what are those materials? What is that pattern? And so it's a bit more playful. All the plaid has been done with tambour embroidery. My father built me a giant frame, which I set up in my living room. And so I spent many, many hours <laughs> embroidering this plaid. Otherwise it was, uh, bead embroidery and just using different stitches to create the look I was wanting. So there's like buttonhole stitches which you use more traditional hand embroidery. This is bead embroidery over top of inserting the milkweed. A lot of the work with the milkweed was making it up as I went and trying to figure out how I could attach it to the fabric. Um, so all the trim was done on the frame and then the circles I did on another frame and I applied them on. I've been doing it since I was little. I went to university to study textile design. I found out about gold work and tap weaving, and I went to do some classes at the RSA and actually had a lot as well. I actually did the prize in 2017. I did 
the garden in there. This time I want to do something really different and I want to take on the work from the as it normally is on a flat piece of fabric, just something three dimensional and sculptural. And I really love the seasons in the UK and I really love the different flowers that come up. Um, so I was really looking at creating the seasonal flowers. actually about uh, natural disasters and how nature is evolving in this way and uh, I've used real moth wings and uh, I've used those because uh, this uh, species is also in uh, danger because of the changes in our uh, environment. I uh, coat them with a bio resin which is made of the shells of uh, cashew nuts. So it's a non-toxic resin. I also made this claim myself to mold these. If you put water on it, it will just dissolve. So I started this one in June and I worked uh, on it until the last uh, day of the, the, the deadline. Yeah, four months straight. Yeah. So my name is Faye Aguedes and I'm originated from Philippines. If you can see around the macrame, it's inspired through um, one of our treasures, which is Banawe rice terraces. It's um, made of plantation, it's a rice plantation, made by our ancestors by hand. So you can see the ridges, which is going through using macrame. I also use natural fibers, such as abaca and lucy, which is completely made of banana fibers from the Philippines. Massive clap for all of the finalists and the winners tonight. Entrance to the prize. Don't be afraid to get creative and to try new things. Um, yeah, really push yourself. And I mean, I would say spend tons of time thinking about it and just like dreaming while you're on a bus ride somewhere because that's kind of how I really got all these different aspects to be able to work and play together. And that's the thing I think I'm most proud of with this. And I, I would just, yeah, encourage you to have fun. So be yourselves, I would say, and be confident, because what I love to see is something that really stands out and just makes me think, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Do not get disheartened. Uh, just keep going, it takes a lifetime.